In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can extract data from tables based on the most recent data. You can see on screen, we've got a table of house prices. So these are house prices in East Midlands, Greater Manchester and West Midlands. And you can see various dates. Now, please note, not all the dates are represented in each of the regions. So the latest date I've got for the East Midlands is September. Latest date for Greater Manchester is October. Latest date I've got for West Midlands is November. What I want is to extract each of these three rows in their entirety. So I want the date, I want the region, and I want the price. So you can do this yourself as a practice activity. And if you do, then I want to see how many different ways you can extract this data. So there are three ways that I'm going to do in this video. How many can you do? The first is a correlated query. So I want you to use a where with a correlated query. The second, I want you to use an inner join. And the third, I want you to use the function row underscore number. So three different ways for extracting the same information. So in each of these rows, we have the latest date for that particular region. So I want the entirety of the information, including the price. So if you're going to do this as a practice activity, then all of this code is in the description to this video. Good luck. So I'm going to assume that you've had a go at it and you want to compare your solutions with mine, or you're just curious how you can do all three of these. Let's have a go. So first of all, we have this table house prices. And you might think, okay, what I need to start with is the maximum of the date, the price date. So maximum of the date from this. If you do, okay, you're starting on the right lines, but unfortunately that will just get you the very latest, which is just for one region, the West Midlands. So suppose you are continuing this logic. Okay, I want to select everything where the price date is equal to the maximum of the price date. Will that work? And the answer, no. An aggregate, so an aggregation, so max, sum, count, min, may not appear in the where clause unless it is in a subquery contained within a having clause or a select list. So what does that mean? Well, it means I have to do select the maximum price date from our table house prices. So that would work in the sense that it gives me everything that's on the very latest date, but it doesn't adjust this for regions. So what I need to do is create a slightly more complex version of this. So I'm going to call this HP for house prices. So what I want to do is say, give me the maximum price date for a particular region. So I can now say where our house prices region is equal to, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to give this an alias, the latest house price, where the latest house price table region are the same. So now I'm saying, give me the maximum date for the region which is in this table. And if I do that, then you can see this now works. This is now a correlated query. It has an inner query and it is correlating that. It has a where for that table based on this outer query. So that now gives me the right answer. It gives me the latest for East Midlands, the latest for Greater Manchester and the latest for West Midlands. Okay, so the second way is to use a join. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my query here. I'm also going to alias it. And I'm going to say, just give me the price date and the region. Right, so that gives me all of this. Now I want to say, give me the maximum price date for a particular region. So the maximum price date. So I'll call that as max price date. 
or a particular region. And here you can see we get an error because we are trying to do an aggregation, the max, with a non-aggregation. So to resolve that, we need a group by clause. So we need to group by everything which has not been aggregated. So region in this case. So that sort of works. That gives me the latest date for each region, but it doesn't give me the price. So what I need now is to have this joined to this table. So this is the latest house price and I need it joined with all of the house prices. So I can do that by saying, select this and join with this. And here we have our second query in brackets and I need to alias it outside. So I can alias it inside, but I absolutely need to alias it outside. So now we need to say, well, okay, where are these two things, this and this, going to be the same? And they're going to be the same in the region, and they're going to be the same where price date equals the maximum price date. So this is where we can put our on. So on, the region being the same as the latest region, and because don't forget, in this LHP table, the latest house prices, we have all of the regions. And where the price date, where the date is equal to the latest date. So let's have a look now and see what we've got. And here we can see we have got the correct answer, albeit that we've got these two extra columns. So let's change this star to HP dot star. So that gives me the original house prices data. So there is our answer. So you can see that these two queries give me exactly the same answers. They just do it in different ways. One using a correlated query, the other using a join. Let's take a third way. So again, we're going to start off with our select statement. What I'm going to say is I want to have a unique number for each region. So let's order this by region and by price date descending. So I want the first price date, the first date to have a row of one, the next one is two, the next one's three, and then when we get to Greater Manchester, this then reverts back to one, two, three, four. And then all I need to do is filter where the row number is equal to one. So I'm going to use row underscore number open bracket, close bracket. And then the magic happens in the over. The over has two elements, partition by and order by. So the partition by is where do I want the numbers to restart? Well, if we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, then I want them to restart when the region changes. So let's partition by region. Next, how do I want them to be ordered by? Well, I want them to be ordered by the price date descending. So I can put that in as well. So I'm going to now call this my row number. So let's see what we've got. So you can see that now I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So wherever the region changes, the row number restarts. Right, you might think, okay, so all I need to do now is put a where. So where my row number equals one. But you can see there's a problem. Invalid column name. We cannot use in the where clause any aliases that we create in the select clause. So can't do that. Okay, so let's copy all of this instead. And quite often this will work. You can see the squiggly red on the line has gone away. But unfortunately, you cannot use windowed functions such as row underscore number in any of the six clauses apart from the select or the order by clause. Okay, so I can't put it in where. So that seems to be a dead end. I can't continue any further, except I can. What I can do is use something called a CTE. This is a common table expression. I can say, make this a temporary table. So I'm going to call this my 
latest house prices table. Then put the word as, and then put brackets around it. Then after that, I've got a new table. I can use that table in a select statement. So I'll select star from LHP. So I get back to exactly where I was. We've just one difference. The order by clause cannot be used in common table expressions. So let's just move that out to the bottom. So now you can see we're back to where we were. We have got our price date, our region, and our prices, and our row number. So you might think, okay, so what's the point of that if nothing's changed? Well, what's happened now is that I've now got from this CTE, this common table expression, a table containing four columns, including a column called my row number. I no longer have to reference it using this. I could just say where my row number equals one, because this is now a table in itself. So I can just run that and we've got this table. So I can use a where clause to limit this CTE. And then I can order it however I wish. So here we've got three different ways of approaching our problem. We can use a correlated query, so one which has in the where a second query, which also has a where, but this where references both of these queries. I could do it by a join. So we calculate which particular rows we want, and then we join on that particular combination. Or we can calculate the row number and then extract the row number if we use a CTE. Now you may be asking after this, okay, but which is better? And my answer to you is whichever one works for you. Now, if you want to have a look at what is the best performing one, then we can include the actual plan. But before I run this, there is going to be a problem. Let's say I just want to run these two. You'll see that there is incorrect syntax with the word with. If this statement is a common table expression, then the previous statement must be terminated by semicolon. So semicolons at the end of statements in SQL are rare in SQL Server. They're commonplace in things like Oracle SQL, but here is one of the few times it is required. So you have to have a semicolon before a with. So now let's run this, all three queries, and you can see that all three queries come up with exactly the same thing. Yes, this has an extra column, but that could be removed in this select statement here. So I could just say select price date region and price, and that will then give me identical results. But which is faster? Well, let's go to the execution plan and you can see the query cost of each one is one third. So for the data that we've got, they're exactly the same. And in fact, the first two are logically the same. They all include the table scan, a sort, a segment on the top. The only difference is that the third one, which is the CTE one, doesn't include the top. It includes something called a sequence project. So add columns to an ordered set and then a filter. So that's the where. So you may find differences with really huge amounts of data sets, but with what we've got, all three of these execute exactly the same. So for you, you may wish to create your own data set and then use each of these three principles, the same results from each, a correlated query, an inner join, and a CTE. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.